Hello everyone and welcome back to the third part in this series on the Blender game engine. And in the last part we had UV unwrapped our model and we had created a light and shadow map for the model. Uh, so now let's continue on with baking the other textures. And the only shortcut that you'll need to know in this video is control shift and left mouse click. And that will connect any node to the viewer node which allows you to see it in rendered view. And so I'm just going to do this to all of the diffuse textures for each material so that it's bypassing the, uh, the diffuse shader so we're not seeing any of that lighting or shadow detail because of course we've already baked that out. Now we only need the texture. And this of course will bake really quickly because it doesn't have to calculate anything, just, just the texture itself. So it'll be very fast. But over here in the render settings, um, we just want to change one thing. Of course, make sure that the reflective and refractive caustics are unchecked. And we want to set the render to one, which is the lowest number that you can go. And samples are, of course, are only necessary for calculating light, and which we don't even have in our scene right now because we've, we've bypassed that the diffuse materials so so now you want to make sure that 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 texture is selected again in the node editor the floor texture that's very important and then we can click bake and it should bake very quickly and so we'll be working with these textures later in GIMP, but for now, let's just go ahead and save this. So we'll go down here to the bottom, click on image, and then save as image. All right, so let's now move on to the ceiling. So I'll click on the ceiling, and then on the ceiling texture in the node editor, which is very important, and then I'll open the ceiling texture in the UV image editor as well. And I think everything looks good. So I'll tap into edit mode so I can see the UVs and click bake. Okay, so we have our ceiling diffuse texture. And I'll just save this as well. And so for the final diffuse texture, we'll do the walls. So I'll click on the walls and open it in the UV image editor, that walls texture. And then of course, click on that uh, texture node in the node editor. And we're ready to bake probably worth mentioning that it's a good time to really zoom in and analyze your texture to make sure that the pixel size is adequate. Uh, in this instance, I would not have wanted to go any smaller because I think that it would have uh, really sacrificed some of the detail. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the, the texture size, so I'll just go ahead and save it. And now that we've baked all of our diffuse textures, we can go ahead and bake the normal maps. So if I control shift and left click on the normal map, it shows up in the rendered view. We've already saved this texture externally, so we can just bake over this. Okay, so now I'll just save this by going to image and save as image. And I've actually made a mistake. So let me quickly show you what I've done. Instead of baking that texture to the, uh, the walls texture node, it baked over the normal map. So uh, I need to reopen that texture in the normal map node. Scroll down and find it. This is, it's such an easy mistake to make. It's why it's so important to make sure that you have the 
correct texture highlighted in the node editor before you click that bake button uh, because it will write over anything that you that you do have selected so now that this texture node is selected I can open the uh, walls texture again and you know the reason that it's so easy to make a mistake I mean, at least for me is I'm always in the node editor tweaking things you know looking at the materials and the nodes to the viewer uh, so it's just very important to make sure that you highlight that texture node uh, before you click that bake button Okay, and so this time I've done it correctly, so I can go ahead and save that texture, and I'll just call it walls uh, normal map dot png. And we will be converting those to JPEGs later because they're smaller in file size, but for now we'll just keep them as PNG. And so let's Control Shift and left click on the specularity map and then highlight that texture node again and then let's bake our specularity map and then go to image save as image and then label it walls spec map And so now let's do the same thing for the floor. So I will tab into object mode and select the floor and then control shift and left mouse click on the normal map texture. And then select the floor texture in the UV image editor. You want to make sure that you're not selecting the normal map node, but rather the texture with the normal map applied to it. Okay, and then we will highlight the floor texture node and click bake. Okay, so now we can go to image and save as image. We'll call this floor normal map. And now I can control shift and left click on the specularity map and then make sure that the floor texture is active and then bake that as well. And now I'll save this as floor spec map. And so now we can take all of the textures that we've baked and put them into a photo editing software like GIMP or Photoshop and we can edit them so that we can use them with our GLSL materials. So I have all of the textures that I baked out into one folder. And I'm going to drop the floor light map into GIMP. It's really common in cycles when baking to get a lot of what is commonly referred to as fireflies or noise. And so the reason that we bake the diffuse out separate from our light and shadow map is that we now have the option to blur this to reduce the noise. So if I go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, uh, by default, this is set to a value of five. So if I take it down to something like one or two, I think I'll choose one just to be safe. And that has reduced a lot of those fireflies and even some of those areas that just looked a little pixelated. Um, it's kind of smoothed it out and made a, a, a little bit more of a, a nice, nicer blend. And so now when we add our diffuse texture over top, the lighting will look a lot more smooth in, in general. And so now if I open up my textures and I drop in the floor diffuse texture. OK, 
Okay, so now I want to move the light and shadow map up to the top. So I'll select it and then click on the little arrow to move it, move it above the diffuse texture. And then I'll set the mode to multiply. And then I'll come down to the duplicate layer tab and click that to, to make a second copy of that. And then I'll set this mode to soft light, which basically just, I feel like it highlights the uh, contrast between the dark and the light values. But the opacity is a bit high, so I'll probably take it down to something like 50%. I think works well and looks very natural. And I think that's good. I think this texture is done. So I can go to image and then merge visible layers, which will combine all three of these into one layer. And then I will go to file and export as, and I'll just change the name of this file to uh, floor diffuse jpeg and then export it and jpegs of course are smaller than png files which is uh, very beneficial for game engines because anytime you can reduce file size it's it's definitely a good thing now let's do the same for the walls texture so i'll select this uh, walls light map and I'll just drop it into GIMP. And for the walls, I baked it at 2000 samples and at a texture size of 2048 by 2048. So um, there isn't a lot of noise, so there's no need to blur this or um, try to reduce the, the noise. I think we can just drop the diffuse texture directly over top. Just as we did before, uh, we're going to move this down below the light map. And then set the mode to multiply. Then duplicate the layer. And set that mode to soft light. And the opacity at 50%. And again, this part isn't necessary at all. It's it's mostly just my preference about really uh, emphasizing that contrast between the light areas and the shadows. So I can go to image and then merge visible layers. And then select file and export as. And I'll just call this walls diffuse dot JPEG and then export that. And then finally, we're going to do the ceiling texture the same way. So we will just drop the diffuse texture below the shadow map and set the shadow map to multiply. And then of course duplicate it and set this one to soft light. And set the opacity to 50% and it's done. And so now we have our diffuse textures combined with our lighting and shadows, uh, which is most of the texture work done. Um, I'm just going to merge these down together and then export this as ceiling diffuse dot JPEG. And now the only thing we need to do is create our specularity maps. So these will be really easy to do. 
uh, I can just open my folder where I have all of my textures and I'll select the uh, floor specularity map and I'll drop it into GIMP and then I will select the floor light map and drop it on top and just like before I will set the mode for the floor light map to multiply the purpose for doing this is because um, you know the specularity map already will control the the hardness and which areas are specular and which areas are not but now that we've added shadows in the areas where shadows are more prevalent it'll be less specular and then these really bright areas will be more specular okay so I think we can save this now so we'll go to file and export as And we'll just keep the name, but change it to JPEG. And then export it. And then finally, we will do the walls texture the same way. So we'll select the the walls specularity map and then put the walls light map right over top and we'll set the mode to multiply okay so I'm ready to save this as well uh, so I just need to go to file and export as and change it to a JPEG file. But I think this is probably a good stopping point. So in the next one, we will apply all of these textures to the model in the game engine. So I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you in part four. Thanks for watching.